Let us talk now, though, to Martin Daubney, uh, former Brexit Party MEP, because Britain and France apparently are going to join forces to stop uh, the migrant crossings, the illegal migrant crossings coming from France uh, to the south coast of this country. But I also want to talk to him about this amazing story uh, about the sort of uh, the the slavery business in this country. There's thought to be apparently around about 10,000 slaves working as slave labour in some of these sweatshops around Leicester, uh, which is thought to have caused the spike in COVID infections over the past week or so. But we're told there could be as many as 100,000 slaves working in Britain. Now, I'm sorry, but I don't see the statue pulling down brigade uh, marching around trying to stop slavery going on right now. They'd like to stop slavery from being remembered in the history books. But what about what's going on as we speak? Martin, a very good morning to you. Mike, hello. Huge fan of the show. One of the few sane voices left. (laughs) Thanks for keeping us smiling through this 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 calamity that is modern Britain. Well, indeed, Martin. Well, listen, I'm a big fan of yours as well. Well, sorry, we won't turn it into too much of a love fest. But I mean, the fact (laughs) remains that there are plenty of sensible people left in this country. And I think it's just time that we rose up and started to make the noises that we should be making, because in the end, we've allowed all this to happen. I blame me. I blame you. All of us who know better have sort of allowed this kind of sweeping wave of lefty nonsense to take us by surprise and we shouldn't be surprised no we shouldn't but what's happening now is that we have the facts and we have the data on our side now these two stories are very much entwined um yesterday alone 400 crossings were attempted from france to the uk 200 were intercepted in france and another 200 in the channel in flimsy makeshift craft right. and behind this Make no mistake, is is human trafficking, uh, the most miserable trade on the planet. Um, people have been through seven, eight, nine countries before they attempt to get to the UK. These are not um, fleeing war zones. They are not refugees. They just want simply a better life in the UK. So it's yeah. long, long overdue that I think France and the UK joined. But putting it back to modern slavery, Mike, Thursday evening I spoke to Andrew Bridgen, um, a new show I'm doing called Unlocked trying to get the economy moving again. And when he said 10,000 people, he called this a cancer at the heart of our society, mm. a stain not only on Leicester, but all of our country. This is going on, and he reckons, for decades. This is going on for decades in places like Leicester and some other northern industrial towns. I think, Mike, this story is just beginning. I yeah. think there's going to be huge political fallout from this, because if it's true, if, if half the things I'm hearing are a quarter true, that this has been allowed to carry on with, with, with political knowledge, this is going to get very, very messy. But to your point about why aren't the outraged Twitter arty and the chattering classes, why aren't they angry about this? It's quite simple because it doesn't fit their script. Mm. I, I spoke to a garment factory owner on Unlocks on Thursday night, an Asian fella who, who was saying he can't compete with the illegal factories, his bottom line, because he plays by the rules. And the fact of the matter is the slave masters are other Asian people. So that doesn't fit the script, does mm, it? No. Universally, white people are evil and white people keep black slaves. And then modern slavery right now that's been exposed in the report today across the West Midlands, where I was the MEP, for example, they reckon there are as many as te- as 4,000 there, 10,000 in Leicester. Often these people are trafficked into the country. They are groomed in places like Poland. They are homeless people. They're vulnerable. They're drug addicts. They're alcoholics. They're put into slave labor. Their bank accounts are seized. Their credit cards are seized. Mike, this is an horrendous story, but they, you're right. They would rather go on about statues from the 1700s. Yeah. It fits the script. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And also rather disturbingly, and I don't know whether this came from your interview with Andrew Bridget, but a lot of the reasoning for behind why nothing's been done about it is because the police were worried about being accused of racism. Now, the last time I heard that conversation was when all the grooming gang stories uh, from various parts of England uh, where nothing was done for the same reason. You're absolutely right to say that. And this is another Rotherham. Um, you remember the Trojan horse scandal across the city of Birmingham where jihadists were preaching in schools. And this was ha- happening in plain sight. Ofsted rose that. Rotherham police turned a blind eye. Rotherham council turned a blind eye. Because you're absolutely right. Sometimes stating the truth is now seen as you're being racist and yeah. divisive and you're trying to destroy the multicultural dream. The fact of the matter is, criminals are criminals. And, and the whole point about having porous borders and not being able to control who comes into our country, we can see now it is a problem. 
if Polish gang masses are, are recruiting very, very vulnerable people, prostitution, lots of women involved, then you know it destroys the myth that we should be a completely welcome country and we shouldn't even be allowed to question that. You know, those those amongst us who were talking about immigration from the very, very beginning of the Brexit campaign, Mike. Now, we were vilified, we were told to be quiet, and, and the truth is now coming out. Now, this is not to say, of course, that every factory in Leicester is operating illegally. That's absolutely not the case. Mm. But we should be supporting bona fide law-abiding businesses by calling out the bad guys. We should be supporting you know, immigrants who are valued to come and work here by calling out the, the human traffickers and the, and the criminal gang masters. Now, you can do both. This isn't a zero-sum game, but we have to speak the truth, Mike, because sometimes it's unpleasant. But until we speak the truth, we don't get any action. And also, as we've seen with the situation in Leicester, it's not just a scandal uh, of political proportions uh, and, and of workers' rights. It's now a health scandal because the reason why these people uh, have had a spike in their COVID infections is because of the way that these gang masters make these people live. And, you know, we've seen the same with the people who are now uh, in Herefordshire uh, who are being locked down because guess what? They're migrant workers who have all been brought into this country from somewhere else and they're living cheek by jowl with each other, working right next to each other, and now they're all getting sick. You know, it's interesting how COVID-19 has actually shone a spotlight on, on, on these two stories because these factories in Leicester, they, they were operating all the way through the lockdown, often when workers were showing symptoms of the virus and people were saying, hang on a minute, what are they doing going to work every day? So they were spotted. And now, guess what? All of those Bulgarians and Romanians that are being crammed into caravans six deep. Yeah, it's a perfect breeding ground for a virus. A virus doesn't care about political correctness. A virus is an opportunist. And what's happened here is these two stories have shone a light on that. And now this is now a public health story, talking about the conditions in these factories, the health and safety, the fire regulations. The unions are absolutely toothless. They can moan all they like about, oh, unions will be the answer. You cannot unionise the black market. This is yeah. illegal slavery, Mike. Yeah. Absolutely right. And I mean, thankfully, uh, you're speaking out about it. We're speaking out about it. I'd like to see Pretty Patel actually make some kind of uh, acknowledgement of this problem when she talks in Parliament later on, because in the front page of Telegraph today, we've got migration crackdown to bar EU criminals. You know, if it wasn't yeah. so tragic, uh, I wouldn't be laughing. But I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, that is not going to happen, is it? But I do think that these two stories give Pretty Patel a perfect spearhead now to really get on a front foot about this. And it's no coincidence that we're now approaching the, the end game of Brexit and controlling our points based immigration system. All of this illegal activity uh, is, is merely uh, more ammunition for the Home Secretary to, to, to weaponize, if you like, to, to draw uh, attention to the fact that this isn't just about freedom of movement and refugees welcome and let's throw open our arms to anybody in the world who wants a better life. Because where you do that, you create opportunities for the most evil criminals on the planet. And likewise, you know, we need to be protecting workers' rights. You know, Andrew Bridgen told me, the factory owners told me, these are people that often are completely exploited, mm. three and a half quid an hour, way below anything minimum. They don't speak English. When they get a tip off, the factories suddenly close. Hey, presto, they vanish overnight. Mike, this is something that needs the full force of, of the law and a lot of money. If we think about saving a billion pounds a month from the European Union, let's spend it on beefing up our coastal defences. Let's spend it on, on, on inspecting factories and putting power back. This is about protecting workers. This is, you know, Leicester have become a political football. But if we believe in protecting our citizens and jailing those who exploit them, then we have to get on a front foot and not be afraid of offending people, Mike. Yes, I think that's right. I mean, rather offend people than enslave them. You know, that's the kind of bizarre world in which we now live. You know, offending somebody uh, who is a slave owner uh, is actually now more of a crime than being a slave owner. Yeah, and, you know, we're seeing today calls for repatriations for all the wrongs committed in the Caribbean. Well, what about if Rome or the Normans or the Vikings pay repatriations to the UK? I mean, how far do we go back? Yeah, yeah. We're seeing a lot of hand wringing, a lot of PR, a lot of image cleansing from corporations, um, Green King, the brewery, Lloyd's Bank, because they profited from slavery yeah. historically. Well, you know, you expect them to do that because they, they don't want to be cancelled. Now, that's what this is about now. It's about right. hurting your business interests. But as a society, we must speak out. Silence gave, gave the greatest protection 
to the sex ring, the grooming gangs in Rotherham, silence gay protection to the, to the radical jihadists that were going into school in the West Midlands. And silence is the best weapon for these illegal slave factories right now in the UK and these terrible squalid conditions that they're being forced to work under. We must speak out, Michael, and thanks for doing it on your show. No, listen, not a problem, Martin. We should be continuing to do so until something gets done.